Um, so in your program, you will have noticed that we have conveniently put in there for you a pledge card that we hope this month uh, or in this four weeks you will really think about that, pray about that, think about the place the church has in your lives. It seems to me that if the church is important to you, if you want the church to be here, you've got to support it. And if you don't, you won't, and it won't. So there you are. That's how it goes. Um, I'm working for our Journey of the Heart uh, program this year. I'm working with a book by Edwin Gaines. She is one of the prosperity divas of New Thought, and her little book is called The Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity. It looks very non-threatening, doesn't it? You know? And such a nice Edwin Gaines. She sounds like, oh, she should be the lady next door. This woman has kicked my butt repeatedly over the years uh, by pushing me to grow again and again and again. Um, and so the chapter I'm going to talk about today in her book is all around goal setting. And this is why goal setting is important. It develops our faith in a directed way. That, now, it works only if you do it, which is just like tithing. Tithing only works if you do it. So what we're encouraging people to do, and I believe this is really the science of mind way. I have done this since I came into the science of mind teaching low many years ago. Uh, is that we set, set concrete and practical goals. And what that does is that creates a vessel in your consciousness for you to be able to hold the greater good that, that God, that the universe, is trying to bring to you. People often don't want to set goals. I know, I hear that all the time. You know, every January I do, we do a goal sheet here for people to fill out. I usually do a little workshop on goals one Saturday morning. I love it. I get so much out of it because I'm really, I'm doing it for me. And, and if anybody else wants to come along, absolutely fine. You're welcome. But I notice that when I do this, every year my life gets bigger and my life grows and it includes more wonderful things. So I'm encouraging people to, you know, don't wait till the first of the year. Start, start right now. That when you have some time alone, think about what do I really want? What do I want to create in my life? What do I want to bring into my life? What do I want to reveal in my life? But do it, take some time when you're alone. Um, because this is important because you want to establish what is it that I really want, not what other people tell me I should want, or not what maybe my parents or teachers or anybody else in my life tells me I should be working on. What do I really, deep down within myself, want for my life? See, I think this is, I think this is really fun. And it's a creative part of, 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 uh, of the prosperity process. Uh, this is all to help you and I experience our divine nature in a greater way. See, here's the thing. God, the infinite, has no judgment on any goal you might set as long as, and especially, that it does not harm anyone else or infringe on anyone else's free will. So God has no judge. If you need a refrigerator, God says, fantastic, you need a refrigerator. Let's set about creating a refrigerator. Or if you're looking for your perfect partner in life now, God says, fantastic, let's bring you together with that person. Now, because this is the science of mind, I have to tell you that part of the process is what we become in the process of our goals being fulfilled. The consciousness that we become, the kind of person we become, the way we get expanded is really, really an important piece about this. Um, maybe, maybe everything is already pretty good for you, in which case I say, wow, awesome, good for you. But in which case, if everything is already great in your life, you will need to increase what Edwin refers to as your blessing tolerance. Yes. Like, how good are you willing for life to get? You know, how good are you willing for things to be? Like, I feel like every year when I do this, my life gets better and better and better every year. I think, how is that possible? How is that possible? I have a very high bliss tolerance, is why it is. You know? <clears throat> so I think we have to get ready. Um, and a part of how we prepare is to, um, to accept to really be willing to accept what it is we say we want in our life. If you want a greater good, you have to do something, right? Ernest talks about treating and moving your feet, right? So the good is not just going to fall out of the sky into our laps. Um, 
you can't sit there like a bump on a pickle, as the saying goes. So setting goals, you know, you've got to move beyond your perceived limitations. This is a wonderful place to, to sort of loosen up on how tightly we know things to be. You know? uh, that we want to step into, really, the process is about stepping into who we really are as expressions of spirit, as sons and daughters of the Most High, as children of God. You know, uh, Goethe said, whatever you do or dream you can, begin it, because boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. I've heard that for years, and I love it. It's, it's just another way of saying, just do it. Just start. Just start where you are. I think that in the process, what we will find is our limiting beliefs will come up, our resistances, and that's a good thing because once they're brought to the light, we can actually do some work to heal them and release them because we want to cast off any sense of limitation. You know, if you really love your sense of limitation, I would say cast it off just for the next few weeks. You can pick it up again later if you really miss it. You know, I don't think you will. I don't think you will. When have we ever said, I'm just not limited enough? <laughs> Never. Nobody has ever said that. You know, what, what would my life be like? This is what I think we have to ask. What would my life be like without my perceived restrictions? What would my life be like without the limitations I think I currently experience? Now, the important thing about this is to not get caught up in how is this going to happen for me at this point in my life, at this time, in my situation, at my age, all that kind of stuff. We had learned something from children here. Children tend to dream big, especially around the holidays, right? And uh, my mother would say, you kids want me to death. You just want, want, want. And I'd say, well, Santa Claus, come on. You know, Santa Claus is an infinite yes. Well, in a sense, the universe is also an infinite yes. You know that we have to be specific. And people say, well, I don't want to be specific because, you know, I'll just, you know, I'll just see what the universe brings. Look, you couldn't go to a restaurant. You couldn't get on Amazon and just say, send me some stuff. You know, could you imagine what you would receive? They have everything. You know, you might get a bag of cat litter and a blouse and spare parts for your bicycle. You know, have a fun time. So we have to be specific. What do you really want? Now, I know for many of us, what we really want has been on a back burner for a long time, and I want to encourage us to pull it forward to a forward burner. If you don't know what you want, how can God, how can the universe support you? How can the universe respond if you don't know what you want? So I'm going to ask us to be really big and take responsibility and make a choice, to absolutely make a choice. So here, we can even do this specifically. Do you have goals around your health? You should. If you don't, you're missing out. We should all have goals around our health. We should have goals around loving relationships. We should have goals around money. We should have goals about our leisure time. We should have goals around our spiritual growth. In all of those areas, you want to be specific. Right? If you don't know what you want, no wonder we don't have the success we could in moving forward in our life. Now, I got to tell you, I love Edwine Gaines. I've, I've met her a couple of times. She's been to different churches that I worked at years ago. And the thing I've really learned from Edwine Gaines, and she says it in this book, in the chapter on goal setting, is metaphysical rule number one. You know what it is. Don't complain. There, I said it in a very nice way this morning, didn't I? I think that was remarkable. <clears throat> that metaphysical rule number one is don't complain. Why? Because complaining is a problem prayer. You're praying the problem when you complain. You know, you're putting all this energy and emotion and feeling into it, and you're telling the universe in a big way what you don't like about the universe. But you're doing it with all this feeling. And probably, if you're like most people, when you complain, you do it again and again and again and again to anybody who listen, anybody that's slow enough to hear what you have to say, you know what I mean? They haven't run off. You will complain again and again and again. So Edwin encourages us, and I'm going to ask us to think about doing that. I'm not going to ask. I'm going to say, let's do this. Let's do this all together to take a 21-day challenge and see what happens in our life around this. Because if you thought Journey of the Heart was just about money, it's not. It's about transforming your whole life from the inside out. And for 21 days, 
The challenge is to not complain, to not criticize, to not gossip, to not use negative language. Oh, my God, what will I say? <laughs> what am I going to be saying? It's going to be quiet at my house. I don't know. But this is the promise, though. If we let go of something, we make space for God to bring something new into our life, new energy, new ideas, new experiences will start to come in in the place where all of that, what I'm going to just call complaining, has been. Because that complaining takes energy. It takes up space. And when that's gone, that means there's space for something else. Have you ever cleaned your garage? Uh, I have had uh, many attempts at this. <laughs> and what I notice in this cleaning of the garage is as soon as some stuff goes, new stuff appears in the night. It's, it's like the gnomes come in at night and they bring, like, where did these boxes come from? Where did this stuff come from? It just, it just, now I realize I have set this in motion myself by always saying I am a great manifester. I manifest. I can always, always manifest and I do. In fact, I even do it when I'm sleeping and that's how the garage gets so full. <laughs> so part of this also is about being willing to give up what we don't want in order to have what we do want. Remember, God has no judgment on any goal you set as long as it does not hurt anyone or go against anyone else's free will. You know, so, so I'm sorry, ladies, you cannot say, I want Brad Pitt to be, you know, my next uh, love interest. Um, if he's already got somebody, that's just karmically incorrect, okay? Uh, and I'm sure he'd be flattered. But you have to say, OK, well, if, if that's the goal, um, you can tell the universe, I want somebody like that who is available. Okay? Do, you, do you understand? So these are the two things that I've really learned over the years about goals that I have found are, are just incredible. One is you got to write them down. Writing down your goals makes it 50% more likely to happen. That's a lot of bang for your buck. You know, that's not a lot of effort. How many of you have been in business and you had to write down goals? Yes, absolutely. If you haven't done that, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to do. So writing it down makes it 50% more likely. The other statistic that I really like around goals is um, it's got to be 50% believable to you. You know, so if you're making $24,000 a year right now, is it really believable that next year you will make a million? Mm, maybe not. Maybe you should just start from 24, go for 100,000. You know, it's got to be at least 50% believable to you. If any part of you is like going, yeah, that ain't going to happen, then it's too big right now. That doesn't mean over time your consciousness will not grow because, of course, your consciousness will. And the wonderful thing that I've seen again and again about setting goals is when you achieve a goal, you go, oh my god, if that's possible, what else is possible for me? If that was available to me, what else is available to me? I've got to keep doing this. Now, Edwin encourages us, and I thought this was interesting. This was an interesting spin. I had never come across this before. I've always read my goals every day, but Edwin says you want to read your goals three times through every morning and three times through every night. Because what that does is that really, really impresses your subconscious mind. It's another way. It's another way in of impressing the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind sets about fulfilling those goals. So Charles Fillmore, who was the founder of Unity, said, desire is the onward impulse of the ever-evolving soul. So because you have a desire to express, to experience in a greater way, Fillmore is saying, this is your soul. This is your soul's activity seeking to be bigger in the universe. So what do you got to do? You got to get a little notebook or a big notebook. I don't really care. And list your goals in order of importance to you. Again, not other people. Are there, then ask yourself, for each of those goals, are there need, changes I need to make to achieve my goals? You know. Spirit within you absolutely knows already if there's something you need to do to change. People don't like this next one, but I'm going to tell you it's powerful. Put a date on when you want it by for every one of your goals. Look, this goes back for generations doing this. This really works. Napoleon Hill talked about this in his work, Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich. 
Think and Grow Witch is Halloween. That's coming soon. Um, uh, so you put a date by when you want. And again, this date has to be believable. If you say by Friday, you know, uh, that you need a million dollars, I'm going to say, is that really, really believable to you? You know, but what could you receive by Friday? Or how much time do you need to get your consciousness to the place where you say, yes, I am now willing to receive a million dollars. I'm willing to receive the love of my life, the perfect home, whatever that is. So again, read them daily, three times every morning and three times every night. Spend some time every day imagining that you have achieved them and what that would feel like. You know, just close your eyes. You know, and with an inner eye, just see your goal as accomplished, whether it's perfect health or the love of your life. See that in place, you know, and just be in that, that imagine, uh, imagination-filled place of achieving them. Then act as if. How would I feel if I had achieved my goals? How would I feel? I'm not saying go out and spend money you don't have yet, but how would I feel? This is important. Don't tell other people. I don't know why, but people seem to take a perverse delight in raining on other people's parade. All in the name of, well, I'm just being a realist. No, you're not. You're being a big negative Nelly is what you're being. You know? Does that bring you joy to ruin other people's experience of life? To be the, the fairy of low hopes? Thanks very much. You know? So don't tell people who are not going to be able to support you 100% in your goals. It's just not their business. Do you have to tell everybody everything? No, of course not. So um, when you accomplish something, it's important to cross it off and add something new to your list and say when you are, and also the date you accomplished it, right? Because we want to start to build uh, a little repertoire, a track record of goals that we have achieved. Uh, and also, that, that God's highest law, which is love, is what's carrying all of this forward in our life. I believe, and I hope you do, that God absolutely wants the best for all of us. I don't think there's anything in divine consciousness that withholds or knows limitation or anything like that. You know, that, that obviously, obviously, if we have some degree of love for ourselves, we will allow good things to come for us, you know, come into our lives. You know, and then also, I think it's out of this ability to say, you know, I do, I do value myself as a being, as an expression of spirit. Then we can truly love our neighbors as ourself. So my encouragement to you this week is to start now, you know, with having goals. Write them down. They must be 50% believable. And tomorrow morning, when you get up, because I know we're well into the day now, tomorrow morning, start 21 days of no complaining. I'll meet you on the inner plane. I know it's going to be very quiet. Let's pray. <laughs> so we turn our attention inward now for a moment, recognizing that we are surrounded, we are filled with God's light, God's love, God's very healing presence. I know that the Spirit of God within each and every one of us is the truth about us that we are made in the image and likeness of God. And so in this awareness of our oneness with God and knowing that we are all connected with each other, I speak the word for us that we are a prosperous consciousness right now today. Whatever it looks like in the world of form, I know on the inside, because we are made in the image and likeness of God, that we are prosperous, prosperous people. That every good and perfect thing that would add to our life is ours right now. We say yes to it, we welcome it, we receive it. And I further claim for each and every one of us that we are on track for these next 21 days with no complaints. No complaints about anything, just to be part of the divine experiment and see what newness spirit brings into our life. I claim for each and every one of us that it's easy and joyful for us to set goals. Not only set them, but achieve them and move on to even greater things because I believe it truly is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom, and that kingdom includes anything and everything that would add to our life in a healthy, happy, loving, abundant way. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of those that we love and hold near and dear, and we remind ourselves as we speak this word that God is right where they are, that their needs are met, that they are surrounded and filled with God's love, 
that God's light shines upon them. We bless our church and all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And we let our prayer be an energy of blessing that emanates out from us to all people everywhere. In particular today, we think of people all over who've been affected by fires, and we remind ourselves that God is present even in the midst of that, in rescue workers, in fire department people, and anyone doing anything to help, we know God is present there. And in all of the people affected, we remind ourselves that God is right there as well. We let our prayer enfold the entire globe that we live on, touching all people, lifting all people, healing all people. And so with a full heart, I give thanks that this is so, that this is the truth as we understand it. And with a full heart, I just let it be, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen.